Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, dear students, uh, today we are starting another uh, lecture series that is based on research lecture series. And in this uh, lecture series, uh, I believe that there will be a series of lectures in which we would describe the various uh, phases in the research process and uh, then how can we make our research more useful and meaningful. So in this context, the first lecture is uh, about the writing your research synopsis. Uh, as we know that uh, the Karakuram University uh, has scheduled to have online uh, presentations of the synopsis uh, towards the mid of the April and all the research students have been advised to submit and prepare and submit their uh, 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 their synopsis proposals. So the first lecture uh, uh, today is about the uh, writing your research synopsis. This is a brief lecture which describes the various sections of the synopsis. Uh, the template of synopsis, I believe that would be shared with you uh, by the, uh, the DESER and the uh, Quality Assurance QEC. Now the uh, importance of the research proposal or synopsis that it provides a holistic uh, picture of uh, your research in a concise and persuasive manner. At one uh, side, it should be very brief to the point, and on the other side, it should persuade the reader uh, that the, uh, the research proposal uh, which you are uh, suggesting is, uh, is something which would definitely be needed to be accepted. The research synopsis is the plane of your uh, research project. It provides the rationale for the research, the research objectives, the proposed methods for data collection and data analysis, of course. Uh, that may continue uh, with the questionnaires and interviews. Uh, in the final research report, when research is completed, the synopsis aids the section of result discussion and conclusions and recommendations. So initially, uh, the synopsis then uh, it is written most of the time in uh, the in the uh, future tense and once you are uh, making it uh, as part of your research report at the conclusion of your research then that becomes in the past and three sections are four important sections like results discussions results conclusions and recommendations are added and of course you will also change the uh, inferences uh, full synopsis may be uh, something uh, like uh, uh, three to four thousand words, but at the proposal stage it may be a bit uh, brief or simple and it may be 15 to 20 pages. Now, uh, when we look at this slide, we see that there are some important parts of the uh, research synopsis, uh, for example, uh, the title, the abstract introduction, uh, problem analysis and literature review objectives, hypothesis, limitations, methodology and methods. Now the last three sections, that is result, discussion and conclusions uh, would become its part one, once you complete your research and you submit your research report. Now, the title uh, is surely an important part of the research. It is normally uh, 15 to 20 words and uh, to be as simple as possible. It should convey uh, the entire message of the research. Uh, this should be brief and self-explanatory. It should relate directly to the main objective of the proposed research. A more specific and descriptive subtitle can be added if necessary. For example, to indicate the main methodology that will be applied. The title of the final report can be different from the working title of synopsis sometimes. Uh, it's not always necessary that you go uh, by the same title at the end. You can explain it further. Uh, for example, when I was doing my PhD uh, in, uh, in structural engineering, initially 
uh, the title was analysis of the shear strength of the high strength uh, reinforcement something like that but later on when we completed the research uh, when we uh, realized that the title should be different uh, based on the work we have done in this uh, in this way we had to submit the revised uh, title to the vice chancellor for approval and definitely it may go again to the dessert also uh, or the uh, director dessert can sometime approve it i'm giving you two example one is from the forestry management for example the effect of participatory forest management on livelihoods a case study from tanzania based on research and analysis prepared by aay this is the second one is another uh, uh, research uh, title development of a decision support system using data warehousing to assess builders and develop insight selections so these are the two uh, different uh, titles but you see that both the titles are giving a very clear message about the research uh, the abstract uh, very important part of the uh, synopsis which give a holistic picture of uh, what you have done or what you are supposed to do in the uh, in the research to so normally we expect that at least five parts must be there and the size of abstract is normally uh, 150 to 200 words which makes it like half a page even less than that when normally it is in single spaced and at the end we have some keywords uh for example within the abstract we uh, should uh, have some uh, information about the problem statement the research objective the theories conceptual model framework used and the literature review based on literature review the data collection which is population sample size surveys to analysis and so on and then expected results uh for example this is a uh, a synopsis that the gilgit baltistan protected areas contribute to the national income through protection of animal species and habitat attracting large number of tourists but local communities would largely bear the cost of conservation receive only a small percentage of the benefit consequently wildlife population decline now you see in the first two sentences a problem has been identified and the problem is that the people uh receive very little premium out of the wildlife uh, conservation the study aims at estimating the total local economic value of conserving the gb environmental park to contribute to understanding of potential for conservation through tourism so the study is basically aimed at to see that how the uh, what is the economic value of this conservation uh, which is coming from the tourist the contingent valuation method so the, the the first two or three sentences they have explained the problem and then objective of the study and now uh, they are explaining the method which will be used to measure the willingness to pay and willingness to accept the cautious test elicitation these are the two uh, very common methods in the uh, environmental economics to um, measure the uh, the benefits of any economic uh, uh, environmental inter intervention Uh, a two stage systematic now the data collection has been explained that a two stage systematic and sampling design will be used to select about 150 respondents to socio economic perception and attitude and continued vision survey data will be analyzed with logit orbit model so you can see uh, and uh, by the end of the day they can definitely write the, con the, the, the contribution or the results which can be uh, obtained from this research this is another abstract Uh, about the artificial and emotional intelligence very brief uh, a systematic review of the existing work in future challenges emotional intelligence can be defined as the ability to identify express understand manage and use emotions ai has been shown to have an important impact on health relationships and work academic performance in this article we present a systematic review of 46 ai intervention studies and adult populations in order to assess their outcomes overall these findings provide some support for the efficacy of ai programs however important limitations in most of these studies restrict the generalizability of their results 
We discuss the contribution of the limitation of these studies and make recommendations for the development and implementation for future interventions. And there are some key words at the end. Uh, this was uh, uh, one of our paper which was published last year, I, I think in 2018. And this paper was basically uh, uh, submitted to a very renowned uh, Cuban journal of the uh, civil engineering, uh, that is uh, ACI Material Journal. And uh, the uh, topic was assessment of punching shear of plate slave using ground slave. Uh, limited research work exists on assessment of punching shear of reinforced concrete flake slave made with blended cement and operating ground granulated glass furnace slakes. This research is aimed at analyzing the punching shear strength of RC flake slaves cast from the blended cement having GGBs, GGBs in different proportion as partial replacement of cement. Four flake slave supported on the ends were tested under column load such that one flat slave was cast from normal concrete with no ggbs and the remaining three flat slave were cast with 30 14 50 percent replacement of cement by ggbs experimental punching shear may expand reflections strain in the steel bars and cracking pattern of the slave were determined the results of punching shear of flat slave from the test were compared with the nominal punching shear capacities proposed by the various codes. The provision of these building codes for the punching shear were observed as safe and conservative for the RC plate slave made from limited cement and carpeted GGBS. And then there are some keywords. Uh, the next very important is uh, introduction. Why we are ca carrying this research? Why? And this why should be answered. What is the need of this research? So we normally introduce the main problem. This identified the research gave unexplained observation, something not yet analyzed. The main subject area and the main uh, sub area where the problem exists for research. Justification for selecting the research problem briefly and niche expected to solve this problem for scientific community or general community. This is uh, information you provide is documentation for the existence and relevance of the problem should primarily be scientific peer reviewed literature. Newspapers, blogs, and a lot of material from the internet are not subject to quality control and are therefore considered less trustworthy. So, in the introduction, you uh, should give very, uh, very credible uh, data uh, to justify your uh, arguments. Normally, it's uh, 150 to 175 words. Uh, the background information is given. Uh, what work is already done? What is the strength and deficiencies? How would you further work advance your knowledge to the wider area of study? Is an entirely new area of study being opened up? Why is this important? Numbering of references, if any, should start from here. So we normally uh, don't give the references in the abstract. Uh, most of the time, the uh, references are given uh, in the uh, introduction and onwards. This is a, um, a kind of introduction. I don't uh, read it, but definitely you see that there are a lot of uh, uh, references given in this, uh, uh, this uh, introduction, uh, in which uh, normally we would like to see the present state of the uh, uh, the uh, knowledge about the uh, literature review and you have identified your problem or gap in the literature review or body of knowledge then you go to the research objective that how this uh, major research is going to fill the gap. Your synopsis should explain why the selected tab is worthy of further exploration. It should also demonstrate that you appreciate the main area of debate and on the topic and show how your proposed research will contribute to further the data debate, uh, the debate. The aims are supposed to convey exactly that why in precise fashion to be written in order of importance once the existing body of knowledge is assessed and the gaps are identified which will justify the research in hand. The objective should focus on concepts and problems mentioned in the problem analysis. Each research proposal should contain one overall objective describing the general contribution that the research projects make to uh, the subject area as well as one of the more specific uh, objects, objective focusing on discrete 
task which will be achieved during the research. So, what we normally, uh, for example, we say that the overall objective or the major objective of this research is this, this, this. However, there will be some specific objectives or specific objectives of research are as follows. Let's see in the next uh, slide. Yes. The purpose of the present research is to contribute an understanding of the actual and potential roles vegetation plays in regulating the microclimate of urban setting in tropical countries. The specific objectives are to quantify the magnitude of air temperature modification by urban vegetation of different spatial uh, arrangement and density, that is crown cover, number of individual per unit area, with emphasis to roadside planting, garden, and urban parks in Islamabad, Pakistan. So this is one very specific objective of the uh, research. To compare urban heat modification caused by vegetation consisting of single and mixed species, conserving the five most common urban trees present in Islamabad. To assess the uh, preferences of Islamabad's inhabitants regarding the species and planting patent related to human thermal comfort. So, Beside the general uh, objective uh, to study the uh, role of vegetation in improving the microclimate of Islamabad or urban microclimate, there are three specific objectives of research. One is deductive research, which is quantitative, and the other one is qualitative, which is inductive research. In deductive research, we normally get the results from some observed uh, data in the form of questionnaire survey, quantifiable attributes, whereas the qualitative inductive research, uh, we may have some observations, some uh, focus group discussions, maybe some uh, interviews, and based on those interviews and some even literature review, we can uh, get some, uh, some results. But normally, the hypotheses are not formulated in the qualitative research. Now, the limitations, I generally describe the, uh, the limitations in terms of the, uh, of the uh, area, in terms of the demographic distribution of the samples, or in terms of the age of population and so on. Uh, but it, it, it does not involve the uh, methodology uh, related limitations. For example, uh, the overall object of the research design was to explore the role of women in co collection and distribution of forest foods. The limitation of the study were this study will focus on amounts and species of forest food collected by individual households. Detail on the nutritional content of the individual foods will not be included in this conclusion on the contribution of forest food to the micronutrient or calorie intake are not possible. So uh, you are just uh, in this uh, research studying the uh, the uh, species of forest food collected by individual households, and you are not uh, then being uh, a non nutritionist, you are not involved in the nutritional value of the various brands of foods which are collected from the uh, houses. The research methodology uh, is basically your uh, detailed uh, game plan in which you would try to understand and to try to convince the readers that how would you do this research. For example, it may include some experiment, survey, model, and case studies. Several data collection methods can be relevant and both qualitative and quantitative methods may be used in mixed methods. The description of data collection methods should always be as specific and realistic as possible. After reading this section, the reader should have a clear understanding of what will actually be done during the data collection. An important part of the method description is the sampling design. An idea about data collection and analysis proposed data collection tools, how the data would be addressed, the hypothesis or research questions. A qualitative uh, analysis, for example, people's response to a specific change could require analysis of the meaning of responses and behavior observed, possibly guided by the theory. Uh, some important components of the uh, research methodology is the research design. For example, you specify whether descriptive, causal, or explanatory, correlational, comparative, exploratory, evaluative, or combination of two or more designs. So the first important thing is that what is research design? Uh, design strategy and framework. What strategies propose quantitative and qualitative? 
If both qualitative and quantitative, that is mixed method approaches are targeted, what could be the mixture of the proposed strategy? Uh, the next is your sampling design and the participants. The sampling strategy, especially with its, its uh, probability as, uh, sampling, or it is non-probability sampling, uh, its type are both, our claim will be made for generalizability of finding. For example, the simple random sampling is a probability sampling, but definitely the convenience sampling or a quota sampling is basically a non-probability sampling. Inclusion exclusion criteria, uh, what kind of uh, sampling uh, exclusion or inclusion criteria would you be uh, will be used? How sample will be recruited and approached? So uh, how the sample uh, will be selected, very important. And what will be the sample size and how the sample size will be determined? So the, there are many uh, uh, quantitative techniques and probability statistics in which we can use the we can determine the minimum size of the sample based on the alpha value, that is the uh, and the z statistics. Uh, the data collection techniques and assessment measures uh, you have to define, for example, uh, whether you will uh, use already developed instrument or questionnaire, or you will be uh, using your own, and if yes, then you have to give the details. If you have modified the existing instrument then definitely you will give the details uh, other way of eliciting data for example the qualitative data through focus group discussion interviews text messages emails and all these together would make the qualitative analysis uh, then material method for observation uh, you have to explain procedure how the data will be collected taking necessary approvals permissions logistics arrangements and assessment and of course the most important part of the data collection is ethical considerations uh, for example uh, the uh, data collection uh, the enumerators their rules and all these is really very important because uh, if the data is not uh, having uh, proper ethical dimensions then at later stage the researcher may may, uh, may uh, face some problems Now the proposed analysis, which we normally give in the uh, research methodology, indicates the most appropriate analysis used for both qualitative and quantitative. That is, for quantitative, we use the descriptive inferential statistics. And for qualitative data, uh, we may use our own uh, understanding based on the earlier theories and constructs. Mathematical expression must be italicized, italicized italics, and uh, numbered accordingly all model equations must be properly numbered all major key variable must be properly measured categorized indicating their specific unit of measures the source of formula must be indicated in the text if you are using some formula in the analysis uh, proposed analysis then definitely you will give the uh, reference to that formula uh, another very important part is the expected results uh, normally uh, when you are completing your research, then you have the discussion results and discussion and conclusions and recommendations. But since you are now uh, planning to do your research from now, therefore, what we expect is results from this uh, research and how these results are addressing the research questions and the objectives which we have set forth in the beginning is really very important. So in the expected results, you would connect the uh, uh, the um, uh, results, expected results with the objectives and sub-objectives of the research. For example, uh, how the uh, results which ultimately will be achieved from this research will be addressing the objectives which have been set for in the beginning. Uh, another very important uh, uh, information which we normally uh, want to have is the time frame that uh, if you, for example, are completing your research in two semesters, then what will be the uh, the uh, the time requirement for different milestones. For example, uh, if the uh, research proposal is accepted within one month, say by the end of the uh, April, then uh, uh, how would you uh, local representatives in the study area, development of the research tool, maybe in the second you can include your literature review then development of the questionnaire survey and all these so uh, based on uh, the research steps which we have discussed you can then uh, find out your time requirement and you can develop a 
the Gantt chart or a bar chart, which can be uh, shared with the supervisor before it is submitted to the uh, university. Now, the last most important is the references that uh, uh, only those references must be given which have been cited in the uh, synopsis, not the other. Uh, 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 for example, we normally uh, there are various uh, uh, styles, but the most common style is the American psychology, sorry, APA, uh, not 